fun. Um, hello, my name is Koi Flame. I was 16. I want to study birds. And I knew that the best place to do it would be the Fitzpatrick Institute here at UCT. So I made the decision. I'd work really hard, I'd study, and I'd get here one day. And today, I am a first year, soon to be second year, master student, part of the Fitzpatrick Institute. I study raptor persecution, supervised by Arjun Amur. I should explain what raptor persecution is. When I first described my project, most people initially think, dinosaurs. And most people are often quite disappointed when they realize velociraptors are not involved. Raptors are carnivorous birds that actively hunt and feed on other animals. This includes eagles, hawks, falcons, vultures, and more. Due to their predatory nature, these birds tend to get into conflict with people often, when they predate on our livestock, on our game animals, and when they sometimes predate on our pets. As a result, people kill raptors to prevent these losses. Although raptors are slow breeding birds and after extreme persecution, they cannot recover their populations, leading to population declines and local extinctions. The official title is Raptor Persecution, a systematic review and investigation of the true extent of persecution in the UK. The thesis has two parts to it. The first is a systematic review to explore the state of research on raptor persecution. This type of review will allow insights into the progress of research in raptor persecution and identify gaps in our knowledge. The objective is to understand what research has been conducted, where, how, and in what form. In the second part, we plan to find an estimate for the actual number of raptors killed due to raptor persecution in the UK. The UK has the biggest human raptor conflict involving red grouse hunting that we'll get onto later. Let's get into this now. A systematic review creates a database of current literature. We employed three steps in creating our database. The first being identification, where we created a search string with certain terms in it that we then put into Web of Science. And Web of Science uses those search terms to scan papers and retrieve them for us. This yielded 1,421 papers. The second was screening. And this was broken into two parts. The first being title relevant, where I read all the titles of the papers and excluded all the ones that did not relate to raptors. This gave us 504 papers. The next was abstract relevant, where I screened all the papers by reading their abstracts, and then deciding whether or not they were relevant. After that, I had 253 papers. The third step, inclusion, involved full text screening. All these papers went under full text screening and then became part of my final database. This meant reading all 253 papers and then one deciding if they were actually relevant. And then once I decided that, finding the raptors that were involved, the prey species involved, the country where the re research was done, but also deciding if the paper looked at whether or not it was finding solutions to these problems and to these conflicts or employing solutions and various other data points. I don't actually have preliminary results. I unfortunately can't show you the results because I increased the scope of the research and this involved a new search string for each conflict that yields way more papers. But I also recently found a fundamental flaws in the past graphs that I made. But I can show you this map because this used a gradient. Although there is also this graph which shows the number of papers that have researched different prey species. I will admit this is also here because it's a great transition to the second part of the thesis. As you can clearly see, a lot of people have been researching red grouse. Here's why. Red grouse hunting is a popular field sport in the UK. 
It started in 1850 and became a sport for the wealthy. Red grouse are these little game birds. And one of the most popular methods of red grouse hunting is driven red grouse hunting, in which the hunters are stationary and men or dogs flush out the red grouse. Then the stationary hunters shoot them out the air. This method requires high densities of grouse to be economically successful. Killing the raptors preying on the grouse is a method to maximize the red grouse populations and to maximize profits. This study aims to find the actual number of illegal persecution events that likely take place in and around these grouse moors. There is a range of studies that quantified the extent of persecution on or around grouse moors. We then use population estimates from this area and time period that these studies have taken place in. From this, we will extrapolate to estimate the actual number of birds illegally persecuted. This is better ex explained with an example. So let's look at one of the case studies. Meg Megatroid et al. 2019, titled Patterns of Satellite Tagged Hen Harrier Disappearances Suggest Widespread Illegal Killing on British Grouse Moors. In this paper, they looked at the survival of fledglings between 2007 and 2017 in England and Scotland. They satellite tagged 60 fledglings. In the first year, the survival rate of fledglings was only 28%, and 86% of the mortalities were likely due to persecution events. This is evident due to the sudden termination of otherwise functioning tags. Therefore, we assume that 61.9% of hen harriers fledged each year in England and Southern Scotland were likely to have been illegally killed. From this, we then gather data from demographic studies on the population status of hen harriers between 2007 and 2017 in England and Southern Scotland. And then we multiply the persecution rate by the population estimates and get an estimated number of birds persecuted. Although this does lead to a lot of compounding uncertainty, there is uncertainty in the data capture of the original study, in the assumption of the persecution rate, and in the counting of birds for the demographic studies. So we will create simulations to account for this. First, a series of persecution rates are generated. Then we generate simulations of what the population look like using those population studies, which will then be multiplied to the persecution rates that was generated and then give us an estimated number of persecuted birds. This will generate a whole series of actual estimates that we will then get a mean of. Now the difficult part will be accounting for all of this uncertainty when creating these simulations. But once that's done, we will have an estimate of the number of birds persecuted. This will be incredibly important for putting a perspective on the extent of illegal persecution in the UK. But most importantly, the number of birds killed is a lot more of an accessible statistic to the public and to governmental parties to understand and empathize with, which will hopefully assist in the ongoing conservation of these incredible birds. When I mentioned that I've always wanted to be part of the Fitzpatrick since I was 16, what I didn't mention was that I was not the happiest teenager. And times often got very dark. But I distinctly remember reminding myself that one day I'll get to study birds at that university on the mountain in the third best ornithological institute in the world. And things seemed just a little bit brighter, at least for that moment. And I think I often forget how desperate those times were and how much clawing it took to get to where I am, physically and mentally. But right now, I want to really let that sink in. But I did it. <laughs> but I made 16-year-old me proud. And there is still so much I want to do.